crossed already 30 minutes. So I want to introduce the first speaker and the, my speakers have uh, a long CV, but given the time constraints, I will just summarize their CVs. So I'm going to introduce the first speaker, Dr. Anak Teng, who serves as the Deputy Director of Uganda Integrated NCD Services, which is a Uganda-based research partnership between the faculty, between the faculty at Makere University College of Health Sciences, Uganda, Yale University, in the US, Mulago National Referral Hospital Leadership, and the Uganda Ministry of Health Program for Non-Communicable Diseases. She's a public health expert in non-communicable diseases in Uganda and provides mentorship and project support to fellows and scholars. The topic today, as you have heard, is defining the NCD agenda in Uganda. And Dr. Anne, you have about 10 minutes. You are welcome. And now the microphone is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Gerald, and all participants who have been able to join. We hope that the rest of our colleagues will be able to successfully join our meeting today. I welcome you all once again to this session. And as mentioned, I'm Dr. Anne Akiteng, and I'm presenting the findings of the Uganda Non-Communicable Diseases and Injuries Commission report on behalf of the NCDI Commission team. For some reason, move to the next slide. Are you able to see my slides? Yes, but we are seeing the, 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 the first one. Yeah. So, so you are unable to change the slides. We'll the next. Uh, Dorothy, I know you can help us. Uh, and but the Andy. participants, at least we have 21 participants now. So, yeah. Hello, Doctor. I am available for hope. What is the issue? So I can't slides. slides yet. I tried it before and it was successful, but now I'm not able to move them. Move the slides. To the next one, yeah. Oh, maybe you need to change the view. You need to change the view you're using. Just leave them in PowerPoint and keep on pressing the down key. All the four keys, it's now working. Maybe let me first stop yeah. share and reshare. Yeah, first stop share and share again, and now be using the arrow keys. Okay. So. The hitches continue. I'm glad the president reminded us in Africa to wake up. So I hope the IT people <laughs> are waking up so that we have to improve our IT services in the era of working remotely. So the title of the report is Reframing Non-Communicable Diseases and Injuries in the Era of Universal Health Coverage. So let's keep that in mind. Universal Health Coverage is the main context Outline in, the, in, in our presentations, we'll briefly look at the background objectives, how we prioritize the conditions, the key findings, recommendation, and briefly about next steps. So my background is not so heavy because it was supposed to be a follow-up presentation, but what I wanted to highlight is that we already know non-communicable diseases and injuries cause a big proportion or big burden of global death and, and disability. Out of the 15 million deaths that occur between 30 to 69 years for NCDs, more than 85% of these come from the, the low and middle income countries. So we wanted to highlight the fact that we have a high burden of the premature deaths. We are, we are losing the most productive population. The global efforts, policy, financing, and all other interventions have not yet benefited the NCD poorest. 
remember when we look when we are talking about universal health coverage we are also focusing on it's basically talking about access of services to everybody when they need it and and at a cost that will not push them to further impoverishment and i think the limited funding is reflected in most countries because i know that in uganda for example the domestic investment in ncds is still poor and that's why we are actually advocating for more. We note that responding to NCDIs in the poor populations will require not only the health interventions in terms of treatment, buying drugs, more equipment, but we also need to look at um, addressing the material poverty and integrating the health service delivery. So the NCDI Commission comes to complement the WHO agenda, which we've had for a while, which is focusing on five major non-communicable diseases. I think we already know them, diabetes, cancer, hypertension, um, cardiovascular diseases, chronic respiratory diseases, mental health, and the modifiable risk factors. So Uganda is not the only country doing this work. And as you can see, we are among those that should be winding up. So we are lucky to actually be in the last mile of the commission's work. In Uganda, NCDIs have steadily increased over the last 20 or so years. You can see from these figures that the NCDs that are in green have more than doubled and the injuries have increased by about 1.5 times. So you can see that the trend is actually steadily going high if we do not start to do um, serious interventions at this point. Also, 41% of the deaths in Uganda are due to NCDIs. And all this data is coming from the Global Burden of Disease Estimates 2017. We also found that Uganda, for the traditional non-communicable diseases. Those are the four or five major NCDs and the lifestyle risk factors. We noticed that the, the, the risk factor, the lifestyle risk factors contribute only about a quarter of the burden of NCDs in this country. It means the rest of the NCD conditions have actually um, could call it a small share in terms of attention, and yet they have a lion's share in terms of contributing to the burden of NCDs in our country. So I know we are doing something about the four or five major NCDs, but this is also to highlight that as we are dragging our feet, there is more work to be done, and it's actually bigger than, than what we already thought we had, because you can see the burden is actually higher. So the NCDI Commission work was officially sanctioned by the Ministry of Health in 2019, and we launched it in August 2019. And you can see on the left, this is the, these are members of the Commission who participated in the different meetings. So the Commission had five major objectives. One was to establish the NCDI burden of disease, particularly by socioeconomic risk factors, to understand the availability and coverage of NCDI services, prioritize among NCDI conditions, emphasizing burden, severity, and equity, propose priority cost-effective interventions to address these priority NCDIs and to estimate how much it will take us or how much it will cost us to actually achieve our universal health coverage target of 65% by 2030. So we looked at a number of data sources. For desk review, we had policy documents, literature. Uh, we looked at the WHO step survey, demographic health survey. For routine data, we had the health management information system, HMIS, disease registries, the SARA survey, availability and readiness assessment the health demographic and surveillance sites, and we also have the national health accounts. And for the model data, we use the global burden of disease. That's where most of the previous actually figures uh, were derived from. 
And you can see we worked with a number of organizations from government, clinicians, academia, researchers, civil society, and the WHO. And the co-host organizations was Ministry of Health NCD Department and the Uganda Initiative for Integration of Non-Communicable Diseases. So how did we arrive at these priorities? So the aim of the prioritization was to identify conditions not included in the WHO Global NCD Action Plan, but required prioritization in Uganda. So this document is not independent. It is coming to complement the efforts and maybe let's say strategies, policies, and other documents or activities that are already happening or in the pipeline to prevent and control NCD. So we wanted to be complementary and to make sure that it's aligned with what is already happening. But we know that from the Global Action Plan, they are from, the, from what is prioritized in the Global Action Plan, we, need, we needed to expand our agenda in our country. And so we used the metrics that are recognized globally, that is burden of disease, severity of disease, disability, and the equity gap. So burden of disease is measured by the daily adjusted life years. And we know that DALIs, that is DALIs, are equal to years of life lost and years of life lived with disability. So disease severity is actually the number of years lived with, number of years, no, years of life lost. And then disability is number of years lived with disability. And the equity gap was obtained by comparing the daily rate. So the daily rate for Uganda for each condition, 100,000 population of Uganda compared with 100,000 population of high income countries. That's how come they came up with the equity gap. So when we looked at those four matrices, the metrics, we needed to understand which of these conditions, NCDIs, if we are to prioritize, actually have the highest scores according to those four metrics. So from the NCDI global burden of disease map, I don't know if any of you has had, had opportunity to look at it. We have 211 NCDI conditions that are already ranked along the four metrics we've mentioned, burden, severity, and disability out of several others. And each of these conditions, so we, we looked at all these 211 conditions and ranked them according to the scores, average score for the four matrices for each of the conditions. So once we ranked according to those four matrices we've mentioned, burden, severity, disability, and equity, we came up with 50 conditions that scored highly. And since we did this work in groups, we felt the number of conditions is still quite high for a priority list because a priority should usually have uh, a few conditions. So we again went further to rank them according to three dimensions. One, does a condition contribute substantially to adverse health outcomes and health and economic consequences? Is the condition more likely to, to have feasible and effective health sector interventions, meaning is it possible to implement? It will not really require a lot of resources and the impact at least would be palpable. It's not something that, for example, you need to do so much to achieve very little. And then we also looked at uh, the dimension of its consistency with policy. So before we look at a condition and put it on that list, is it already in alignment with what the current policy documents and strategies of our government what they are saying, what the, doc, what the policies and strategies are talking about. So after that exercise, we reduced them to 32. But during the feedback sessions, members noted that we needed to put back nine years on the list because they met the above criteria and they felt that they would actually fit into yeah, the context of what we're doing. So that took us back to 41. Then when we submitted this to the ministry, they realized there were two other conditions that have, um, have made good progress in terms of advocacy efforts and what 
uh, partners are doing. And so it would also be a good opportunity for them to be included among those conditions listed. Of course, someone might ask if we are prioritizing, why do we have a long list? So if you actually look at this work in the context of universal health coverage, you should not even be having a priority list because every disease should be a priority for everybody. I mean, if I have a condition and maybe we are only two people in the country, we should be, uh, we should not struggle to access services because we don't have high numbers. That's what it means. But in the context of uh, countries with limited resources, they need to plan. At least now we have a pool of priority conditions that have been um, generated based on evidence and also looks at a combination of uh, actually world recognized metrics for quantifying burden of disease. Yeah, like burden, severity, disability, and equity. So we now have a total of 43 conditions and I'll show you the table um, ahead. So what did we find? After the commission's work, of course, when we looked at all the data we had found, we noticed that NCDIs comprise a large share of the burden of disease in Uganda. I'm sure this graph is quite familiar to many of us. You can see the green one is talking about the communicable maternal and child health conditions. The blue is looking at NCDs and the yellow is looking at injuries. And actually there is a study done by Dr. Kalia Subul and team that found a similar trend uh, for a four-year cohort of patients from Lago National Referral Hospital. So it's basically speaking to the same trend that we noted earlier, that NCDs and injuries are steadily rising and maternal and child health, much as there is a downward trend, meaning with all the resources that they've poured into these conditions for all these years, they are starting to go down, but they are still high. So it means we need to continue injecting more resources to keep their trend going downward, but also intervene at this point so that NCDIs and injuries do not continue and meet. I don't know when they would meet if we didn't do much at this point. So that actually, as you can see, 37% of all the DALIs and 41% of all deaths were due to NCDIs. And you can see that over the last decade, the relative burden of NCDs has actually doubled from about, yes, you can see 14 up to 30 something. So we also found that the proportion of deaths due to major NCD diagnosis categories increased. And this data was obtained from a community cohort in Iganga Mayuge. Remember, I showed you earlier that we use data from different sources. You can actually see that the non-communicable diseases were contributing to 40 to 29% of all the deaths. Yes, and the external causes, which is this gray one, is injury. So it comes to about a third or slightly more than that. So this being a community cohort, and it's also about, let's see, about 10 years follow up. So you can see that the trend in the community is actually similar to what the, the national trend is. And yet you'd think that Iganga Mayuge is a remote area, it's a village and people are eating well, or they are doing lots of activity, they are walking around, but the, the injuries and its NCDs are actually going up and also contributing to a good proportion of the deaths. <clears throat> we also saw that we found that the major, the proportion of deaths by the NCDI, individual NCDI categories in Iganga Mayuge is still high. So you can see the red bars are for NCDs, the commonest and the highest was hypertension, then we had diabetes, uh, abdominal conditions, cancer, anemia, and so forth. So it basically speaks to the same finding that NCDs contribute to uh, a big number actually of the NCDA deaths and diagnosis. So, are you from the, to in the in the next three, three four minutes. 
Okay, NCD, we found that NCDs occur at a young age in Uganda. So in Uganda, we know, for example, that it's the elderly are affected by NCDs. And even if we know that there are now uh, a number of young people, middle-aged people getting NCDs, it's interesting to note that 56% of the DALIs due to NCDs and 75, about 70% 70 due to injuries estimated to occur below the age of 40. You can see that. We've also, we also found that the proportion of the DALIs from NCDs in Uganda is actually greater from the non five by five. So you can look at this, if you look at this pie chart, the five by five, the five major NCDs are actually the area shaded green and the other NCDs that are not among the major are in this area shaded gray. And you can see that yes, the burden is diverse, but it's actually more from the non-traditional NCDs. So that still adds to the same point, there's more work to be done. So we also found that um, the crude death rates for NCDs and injuries by wealth quintiles. So when they looked at the crude death rates from the Iganga Mayuge data, you could see that the poorest, so if you cut divided up the categories of the, um, the poor people into the five, you know, the quintile. So we have the poorest, poor, poor and less poorer. Sorry, poorest, poorer, less poor and least poor. You can see that the people in the poorest quintile actually had a high, almost three times a high death rate compared to the least poor. So it means that the poorest people are actually still suffering a lot and also dying of NCDs. So we also found that majority of the NCDs deaths occurred outside the health facility. You can see from this chart, NCDs, communicable diseases, and then the injuries. Of course, it's not surprising that most of the NCD deaths occurred at home. One could be because there are chronic illnesses and um, the deaths for injuries were noted to occur en route to hospital. You can see that injuries had the highest number en route. Maybe it's also because usually it's from accidents and people en route to facilities or dying on arrival. And then the infectious diseases for people dying at home, we had, so from the health facilities, we had the highest deaths coming from the acute, sorry, from the communicable diseases. So most NCDs occur, meaning for us as researchers, policymakers, and clinicians who think that all patients come to the hospital, you can actually see that a big number don't even come to the facility and actually dying in big numbers in the community. So we also looked at the proportion of health facilities offering NCD services, and this was from the MOH SARA report 2018. You can see that the highest concentration of services was more in regional general hospitals. In fact, it was um, directly uh, like linear, moving by the level of health facility. Of course, privates were doing better than the public, urban, urban doing better than the rural. And interestingly here, the middle doing better than Kampala and other areas. Uh, that, that generated a bit of a debate, but because we, we did not do the study ourselves, we extracted this from the report, but it's something that we definitely need to review and understand what exactly is causing them to do well. And yeah. So we also looked at availability of essential medicines, 55%, 54% of all facilities reported providing So we looked at also the 
Mean availability of essential medicines for NCDs compared to other conditions. You can see that for TB, malaria, HIV are doing quite well, but for NCDs is actually less than 30%. And this is national average for the facilities that stock those medications. And we can also see from this chart, the NCD meds are the ones in green, and you can actually see that they are quite low. Very and few. Go through uh, your slides faster that, because we lost a lot of okay. time. Okay. So we also notice that, yes, NCDI domestic funding is limited. You can see infectious diseases, NCDs, and injuries are very low, but we have the highest out of pocket expenditure. So you can see what does that to already our impoverished um, population. So in recommendations, we said in order to achieve universal health coverage, we needed to expand our NCDI agenda. Even if we know we, we still need a lot of improvement in the five prioritized NCD conditions, but there are a lot more that need our attention. These are the 43 conditions that we prioritized from the previous selection exercise that I told you. And we also recommended that um, there are already evidence-based interventions that can be used to and control NCDs. So the, the policymakers or the practice and policy community has things that is backed by things, um, strategies backed by evidence to support their decision making. We definitely need to invest more in NCDIs, emphasize prevention and screening for early diagnosis. And here we are looking at things like also strengthening community participation, capacity development, and equipping facilities. We definitely need multi-sectoral action at all levels, government, uh, non-state agencies, private sector, and so forth. And we also need high quality data on NCDIs because high quality data helps us to make um, good, it helps to inform our decisions that will help in the prevention and control efforts. So this slide is just to quickly give us examples of the impacts of NCDIs uh, commissions in other countries. You've seen it increase visibility, informed planning, and prioritization. It has helped countries identify previously neglected conditions, improved their service packages, encouraged financing, empowered communities and civil society, strengthened partnerships and skills, but on, and also support. It's now like a main guide or working together with the WHO Open Plus package. So after here, we will continue to disseminate this report more broadly, of course, and evolving, bringing other partners on board to see how best to operationalize it and generate resources to implement it. And we are also working together with the Global Lancet team to find resources to pilot the Pen Plus package in Uganda. And the Pen Plus is going to look at the some of these conditions that we've already realized affecting the poor, there's a big burden, but they're actually not receiving as much attention. So we want to see how um, intervening in those conditions is going to impact our numbers and the burden of our country. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Anne. You've taken a little bit more time, but I think it was necessary. And I'm happy you brought out to some issues that NCDs happen in the poor, not only in the rich, but in the poor, in the rural areas, that people with NCDs, actually a majority of them die in their homes, so we may not even know the, the true picture. You've also highlighted that NCDs are killing the young productive population, the below 40 years, and also that there are several NCDs outside the five major that are causing mobility and mortality in Uganda. Our participants, please, if you have comments or questions, keep them either on the chat. I think you ask them on the chat. We shall make sure that we have some time to discuss them. But because of time, allow me, we go to the next presenter. The next presenter has a very rich CV. And again, I apologize. I will not read all the CVs because it's over two pages. I will just summarize because of time. Our next presenter is Dr. David Okero who serves as a director for non-communicable diseases and health aging at Africa Center for Global Health and Social Transformation, that is at
is a retired World Health Organization expert who in the past five years was serving as the head of mission and representative of WHO to Zimbabwe, where he was responsible for activities of WHO in the country. He joined the artists on 17th January 2018 to add his wealth of experience to the pool of the existing health think tanks. Prior to this, Dr. Kuro served as WHO representative in Nigeria, in Kenya, and in Swaziland. And for a period of about one year, in, 20, in 2006, he was responsible for overall oversight of the WHO country office in South Africa. The work of the WHO country representative involved working with top government officials to provide policy advice on matters of health and development and directing the work at WHO, including in country coordination of WHO technical support, using resources available in the country offices and in liaison with the regional office and global headquarters. The, 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 the CV is rich, as I said, but I will stop there and hand over the mic to Dr. Okero, who happens to be my teacher, actually, and mentor. Dr. Okero, you are welcome to talk about building on, on the gains of the NCD Commission. What next? Thank you. Over to you, Dr. Okero. Dr. Kero, are you facing some challenges? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Okay, I was saying, I, I'm very proud of you, Girard. Now, from a teacher, now I serve you. I'm very Thank proud you. of you. Thank you very much. Okay. okay. I think, let's go straight to the point. The commission did a commendable job in my view, the commission has opened our eyes into an emerging major health problem affecting both the poor and the rich. And my task is to reflect on what next after this work. So what's the way forward? And you have presented in a very rushed way, a very rich report, but let me try and reflect on the way forward really. My presentation, I'll give some introduction. I will elaborate on building on gains of what you have presented. I will discuss the issue of intersectoral collaboration. You have talked about it, multi-sectoral collaboration and so on. I will elaborate the importance of addressing health in the homes of people. I'll talk about people's participation Yesterday, when the president was opening this mission, this conference, he talked tough about how Africans do business, that we are sleepy and so on. So I will reflect a little bit what Africans should be doing for themselves. And I will summarize with some key messages. Next slide, please. Next slide. Well, NCDs are rapid. Uh, not that fast, not that fast. Go back to the previous slide, please. NCDs, as Anne has said, are rap rapidly rising and the burden is predicted to double by the year 2030, the SDG N period. There's growing evidence that populations living in poverty are having added, added burden from NCDs. Again, Anne explained this very well. The goal of the Uganda NCDI Commission was to strengthen ongoing efforts to build an investment case for the prioritization, increase financing, and improve service delivery for NCDs. This was the purpose of that commission. The findings and recommendations that have been presented by Anne, in my view, are very clear and will add value to the efforts to deal with the burden of NCDs. These are some of my introduct introductory statements I want to make. Next. Now, building on the gains of the NCD Commission, I think there are five things we need to address. First, at the policy level, 
the report that will be distributed or made available to us is a tool that has brought evidence and strategies that can inform the ministry policy debates as well as health strategies on how we can implement agenda on NCDs. This is a very rich tool. I think we should pick it and run with it if we have to deal with NCDIs. Also, the report has identified several gaps, gaps that, in my view, are research areas where we need to elaborate more. We need to dig into further issues that have been identified in this report to answer the questions around NCDs. So the research work has not ended. We must promote more research, and they're all in the report. Again, this report is a tool for advocacy. It's a good tool for lob lobbying on NCDs and prioritizing the issue of increased funding that Anne talked about. There is also a elaborate discussion about implementing packages of care for NCDs, for access to high quality services, the so-called PEN Plus agenda. This again is something I think we all should support. And I want to make a special appeal to the UN agencies to support this, this effort. The UN agencies, development partners, you know, the Lancet Commission can continue and should continue to help us deal with this issue. The, the, the PEN Plus is, is a good agenda to follow. And as highlighted in the report, I really want to appeal, if we have to make any progress, local investment on NCDs now is critical. There is a lot of discussion about poor funding and so on. So I think we need to invest more on local local issues local budgeting for ncds in this country those are very important points i want to push to move forward now related to this next slide please sdgs which is really the end point we are all working towards this are integrated they're interconnected they're indivisible and in my view, can only best be implemented through intersectoral collaboration. We need to work across sectors. This cannot be advanced by the health sector alone. We need multi-sectoral collaboration, all of government approach and all of society approach. That's the way we will make a difference. In addition, I want to emphasize full engagement on community is critical with involvement of local leaders, religious and clan leaders, civil society, private sector, civil servants, health development partners active in communities should all be engaged. We cannot run with this from headquarters only. We need to engage the community squarely. Next. Again, let me bring the issue of if you want to make any movement on NCDs, health is made at home and only repaired in hospitals when it is broken. This is a famous statement made by Professor Maswa many years back. Very relevant quip for NCDs. We need to put more efforts on health promotion, disease prevention, screening for early detection. That is the way we will move. And it should happen at the home level where we should address issues of lifestyles, what we feed on, living conditions in the home will affect NCDs, the environment. You know, we are now talking about environmental pollution and so on in the home environment. We need to address all this if we have to move on with the NCD agenda. Next. People's participation is another reflection I want to put here. Unless our efforts are owned by people, it will not happen. In Africa, if it does not happen in communities, it does not happen anywhere. It does not happen at national level. This is what Professor Miriam Were of Kenya has been writing about. We really need to make things happen bottom up if we want it to move. And again, as I said, the president was very tough on how Africans do business. And there are some challenges 
as a people that we need to face. If you go to communities in the rural areas, you get a feeling that there's lots, lots of self-confidence and self-determination. There's a mindset that combines this, this empowerment and loss of can do, I can do it attitude. It's completely eroded. Erosion of sense of ownership and accountability. Health is perceived to be taken care of by someone else, usually by donors. Limited, even now we have very limited local investments on NCDs. We need to address these issues. I think we can do it. We just need a mindset change as the president was pushing us yesterday. Next. Next. So what should Africans be doing for themselves? In my view, we must own our destiny and reclaim our role as agents of change. Until unless we feel the pain and the shame of our condition, we will not have the commitment to take action needed to right the conditions we are in. The new call for all of us on matters of NCD, if not by us, by whom? If not now, when? And if not here, where? We do not always have to copy, but when we copy, we must do it in context and adopt to our situation. This is extremely important. We need a mindset change. We need to move the way the president was guiding yesterday. We can do it. We cannot be expecting help from elsewhere. I really want to congratulate and, and echo what the president was saying yesterday. That's the way we will deal with NCDs. Next. Next slide. So my key messages I should end, I was given on the, on the eight minutes. The NCD commission work is a wake up call in my view. And we need to take it up to address the emerging crisis of non-communicable diseases and injuries. This is an important report. We should quickly disseminate it and make it available to all stakeholders, including communities. We need to put more emphasis in my view on health promotion, disease prevention and screening for early detection possibly at community level. We cannot wait for people in hospitals, in health facilities. This needs to start now. Community engagement is key. I also think enforcement of intersectoral collaboration is equally important across sectors and between programs. Sometimes you see an element of silos handling of things that the department of NCD works alone health system people work, community people work alone. No, we need to work across and consult and even share budget. Why not? We're working for the same people. Finally, we must prioritize local investment on NCDs. If we are depending on funding from outside, we are not going to make any way. I thank you all. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Dr. David. That was an enriching uh, presentation. Thank you, especially for emphasizing investments in NCD prevention and control. You are emphasizing local investment, but I think we need investment across the board, intersectoral collaboration, community involvement, health promotion and disease prevention, and that Africans must own our destiny and do something. Thank you very much. Again, if you have questions and comments, our dear, uh, participants, please ensure that you put them in the Q and A, but we can also have maybe, if we have some few minutes, we can give you an opportunity to ask questions. I see Dr. Ann Mochumbi is in the participants. I don't know wh wh why you cannot uh, upgrade her to the, to the panelists, because I wanted her to be our next presenter, to give us uh, the international perspective we the have some, 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 some technical issues, but uh, they're working on it. Maybe you can be introducing her as they transfer her to the panel. Okay, so our next presenter, whom I will give five minutes, is Dr. Anne, uh, Dr. Anne Oruga Muchumbi. Very rich CV, and I, I, I think I should summarize it. 
she's a, a cardiologist with particular interest in neglected cardiovascular diseases. She's a professor of cardiology at the University of Eduardo, Mondrian, Mozambique, and is the head of the Division of Non-Communicable Diseases at National Public Health Institute at the Ministry of Health in Mozambique. Uh, Dr. Mochumbi obtained the uh, MD in 1992 at the University of uh, Eduardo uh, Anna, I, I want them to add you that. Is she, is she ready now? Dr. Anna Olga is the co-chair of NCD Property Network Steering Committee and as I've said, a professor of cardiology at the University of Eduardo Mondale in Mozambique. And she's going to uh, give a presentation on, on uh, perspectives of, of, of the NCD commission. Do, doctor, I see, I see Dr. Anne Musumbi is not connected. I think she has dropped off. We need to call her again. I see her in the participants. Has she left? So we gave we gave her access as a participant, but I think yeah, uh, she has left. I don't know. Try to to call. I think she has left. Uh, Doctor Isaac, do you want to talk about to uh, briefly in in one or two sentences about to the global NCDI commission? Uh, Yes, uh, thank you so much. She, she's joining. She, uh, when she had us talk, she actually thought she was going to. Uh, but she has left for another engagement. Well, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Uh, yes, so uh, as a background, uh, you know, because of the increasing uh, challenges of non communicable diseases, uh, the global uh, NCD uh, commission has been happening in other countries. And uh, through interactions, uh, and Gerard actually was so pivotal. Uh, he attended a meeting and when he heard about uh, what was happening everywhere, he invited uh, the Lancet Commission and uh, to, to also consider Uganda, such that we, we are able to, to look at uh, these, these things and uh, learn from what others are doing to be able to view the case around uh, communicable diseases. Uh, uh, and, and with that, to be able to 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 to, uh, to narrow the gap that was uh, evidently there. But uh, 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 Dr. Anna has some other things that she can uh, speak to, and I see she has joined. Uh, but we appreciate that investment uh, because they've provided support all through from uh, concept, the participated in our workshops, and we also appreciate the, the commissioners uh, the, who were selected across uh, from different uh, bodies. So uh, Anna, you are welcome. Uh, please, you can share your slides. Uh, we apologize about the technical issues. Thank you so much. Dr. Anna, Mochumbi, are you online? Our time is actually well spent. So if there are any questions or comments, we can welcome them. Once again, I want to thank our wonderful audience and apologize for the technological hiccup. I want to welcome Fajembola Azizat, who says she studied her first degree in Uganda and she was able to join. Where have you joined from, uh, Fajembola? She's not hearing us. I want to thank my classmate in the medical school, Professor Patrick Chamanwa, all the way from uh, IHK. Uh, is it IHK? No, is the Kampala International University for joining and all of you have managed to join this session. I want to know whether the commissioner is online so that we give him the chance to give his remarks. Dr. Anak Teng, is the commission online? He is not, he had issues accessing and 
And Dr. Olano is not online? No. So do we ourselves launch? Uh, what is the advice? Is the chair permitted to launch this report and we close the session? Yeah. Why not? It's... You are the commissioner. <laughs> 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 I want to see you launch it. <laughs> I, I, I was not even given a copy here. <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Minister of Health and on behalf of the Commission of NCDs, whom I deputize, I hereby launch the NC, Uganda NCDI Commission and hopefully that the Minister of Health will take it on and look at the strategies proposed and the, and, and, and the, and the recommendations and we shall take it from there. Doctor, oh, doctor very good audience. thank you very much. Doctor, I can see Dr. Anna. I'm sure you can see her back. Yes, I can see her. Dr. Anna, do you have a few remarks that you would want to ask my, before I, I close the session? Dr. Anna? If the IT team can help, because I can see she has no icon for voice. The video is mm. on, but you don't see icon. The video is on, but she has no speaker. Dr. Anna, can you hear us? Dr. Anna Mochumbi? And there are some more questions on chat as Should well. Yeah, it's just a comment from Professor Chamanua. Thank you. Then there's a question, what opportunities are available for the- Hello, doctor. You need to tell Dr. Anna to join with audio. Dr. Because Anna somehow is not listening to us. Dr. Anna Mochumbi, can you join with audio? She cannot hear us, but maybe we just need to give her a call so that she can join with audio. So uh, maybe uh, 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 Dr. Anna Kteng, can you answer that question? What opportunities are available for the young researchers on NCDI in terms of support and mentorship as uh, somebody contacts Dr. Anna Mochumbi? Anna Kteng, what opportunities are there for young researchers? Thank you very much. This is from Salvias. It's a good question. So this is the first time we are having such a commission of its kind, especially for non-communicable diseases in our country. Uh, the opportunities that I know for now are those that will come with a pen plus implementation. That is uh, the next level. We are discussing implementing um, in, or in building a development aspect, the details of which have not yet been finalized. However, the report in itself has opened up so many research gaps that young researchers scientists can explore and work with institutions and partners that are available to support them. For UINCD as an institution, we usually support a lot of fellows and do mentorship. But um, we have to mobilize resources. And most times we are successful if resources come from a student's institution to support the research activity. So if this person, um, I see the name, I can't tell whether it's a he or she, can contact us directly, we can maybe carry on that discussion to understand more about their interests and also see when there are any opportunities that we can link them with. I think I mentioned in another meeting that uh, one of the things UNCD does, and that's our strength, is the twin mentorship model. So we usually have international fellows paired with local fellows to answer a specific research question. So depending on their interest, especially if it's in the area of NCDs, there might be opportunity coming in the near future. So it would be good to keep in touch and see how best they can benefit from any available opportunities. Isaac, you may want to add on that. Tell him where he can find you. <laughs> yeah, so uh, thank you so much. Uh, we are available, we are located on, uh, on, on, on Upper Mulago Hill. 
uh, opposite the football pitch uh, next to the MJAB uh, offices. Uh, it's called the UINCB offices. Uh, it's open, of course, now with the lockdown, uh, we've closed, but uh, we open to receive, we provide mentorship through different uh, fora uh, through the, as the opportunities come. We've had actually quite a number of fellows go through our hands and some are still continuing to go through our hands. We are available to support uh, and guide uh, national and international. And we also have networks where we can actually uh, comment. Uh, and, and, and also the, 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 this commission actually was uh, 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 constituted by quite a number of experts in the different fields, and these are willing to teach and support. So those, those, those uh, areas of interest can be shared with us, and then we are happy uh, to reach out. Uh, we'll share our contacts in the chat so that people can reach us directly. Thank you so much.